Are you in the corporate grind working from 9 in the morning until 5, 6, or even 10 in the evening? Have you begun working from home full time due to the world's most recent events? Has your productivity at work or mental sanity been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? Is the distance between your bed and your office less than 4 feet away, yet you struggle to make it online in time for your first meeting? Have you become sluggish, bored, uninterested in life? Have you started binge drinking daily to find the last remaining thing that makes you feel alive? Are you filling yourself with more caffeine than ever, yet still feel the dying urge to fall back asleep in your bed? Do you some days feel that instead of working, you'd rather jump out of your 11-story high-rise apartment building? Then don't step off that ledge just yet, because I've got the solution for you. It's the Work From Home Handbook, jam-packed with tips and advice for the modern worker. If you are a returning homie, welcome back, kids. If you're a new friend, hello, my name is Kelsey. I am a vegan interior designer vlogger. I'm now identifying as a vlogger. And I've been working from home since March of 2020, which is now about 18 months. And just saying that is giving me heart palpitations because I physically cannot believe that it's been that long. I decided to make this video because I've been really struggling with this new work from home life that we've all kind of been thrust into. And I hope that this video can either help someone else feel a little less uh, mentally and emotionally psychotic like me and um, maybe you can relate to a couple of struggles that I've been dealing with this past year and a half. I don't really like the idea of me making a tips and tricks video or my top advice to deal with a problem that I think I've mastered that you haven't mastered yet because I really don't have any authority to be any kind of expert on any subject in my entire life. So this video is going to be more so just me talking about the things that I've struggled with and a couple of the ways that I've learned really worked to help cope with this new like day-to-day -day life that I'm living and also how I've been able to feel more productive and more motivated and just like all around happier in my day-to-day -day life which I think is is the is the number one struggle these days for those of you who don't know anything about me I am a full-time corporate interior designer so I work for a large architectural firm in the corporate world I design corporate spaces as well as do a little bit of hospitality um, but essentially I work a typical nine-to-five job I used to go into the office every single day but ever since the pandemic started I have been working from home full-time day-to-day my job is I would say half creative where I'm designing things I have to look at physical samples and finishes and the other half of my job is a little bit more technical I'm using a lot of heavy uh, programs on the computer. I'm answering a lot of emails. I am drawing up construction documents. So I have a little bit of both where I need to be in a creative space, but I also need the technology and the Wi-Fi and the, the computer capacity, I, I guess is the word I'm looking for. For someone who is working in an extremely creative job and it's very collaborative and, and also I'm just an extreme extrovert, like ESTJ, if you know what that means. I'm a people person. I cannot sit still for more than an hour at a time. I just, I, I need to get up and I need to walk around and I need to talk to people. The fact that I have to sit in an eight by eight bedroom for nine to 12 hours a day is is the sole reason that I've gone absolutely batshit crazy this last year. I seriously cannot even fathom the fact that I used to sit in an office at my desk for that exact period of time and, and not go crazy. And that was normal. Since working from home, I get frustrated more easily. Like literally someone will send me a perfectly normal email or ask me a very simple question in a very kind way. Like someone would email me, hey Kelsey, could you please send me the link to that presentation you created last week? And I would be like, as per my last email, find it your fucking self, Barbara. It's in the folder. I sent you the link to the folder a million fucking times. I cry a lot more, which I used to cry uh, before, but now it's a lot more and a lot more frequently frequently and a lot less reasons for the crying. I have zero work-life balance. I feel like I just wake up every morning, I go to work, I eat, I go to work again, I sleep and I get up and I do it all over again. And if you are feeling any of this, just know that you are not alone because I myself am 
and phys I'm physically struggling. I'm physically going crazy. Fortunately, in recent months, I've really been trying a bunch of new strategies and coping mechanisms in order to deal with these things. Definitely considering we don't know when exactly we're gonna get back into the office and we don't know exactly when we're gonna get back to to full real life. Work from home might be a forever thing. We have no idea. So I think we, for the time being at least, need to accept that this is the reality and it might be the reality for the far or near future. So in my opinion, we should be taking steps to try and improve our day-to-day -day life and our working lives. If I could give you only one piece of advice in this entire video, it would be to upgrade your damn workspace. I was in denial for a full year of this pandemic when it first started, and therefore I settled for the most uncomfortable and most mediocre, torturous work setup that I could even imagine. At first I was working uh, from my bed because hell yeah, we're working from home! Let's work in our bed in our PJs! And that's actually a very terrible idea, not only because when you lay in that reclined position for so long, the top of your butt like goes numb very quickly. I don't really know if you know what I'm talking about there. Like the, the top of your butt just gets like pins and needles because you're like, I'm not really explaining it well, but I feel like someone else knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then you also like fall asleep more often during your work hours when you're laying in bed all day every day. You're just not very motivating. When I was in my old apartment, the only desk setup I had was like a really tiny vanity and a piano bench to sit on, which probably brought back my scoliosis. And when I moved back in with my parents, I was using a beer pong-esque folding table and metal folding chair, you know, the ones that you use at like outdoor like graduation parties. Yeah, it's not ideal, it's not very comfortable. I was angry, I was frustrated, I was upset about my current way of living and my quality of life, and I was extremely uncomfortable probably because I was sitting in a metal folding chair for 10 hours a day. When I finally got this new apartment in the city, I made it my mission that I was going to invest in a real work setup in my bedroom and I was gonna get myself a real ergonomic chair that I could sit in all day and not have my butt go numb and not get scoliosis and feel just a little bit more comfortable with the fact that I'm spending nine to 12 hours in front of my computer. If you don't know, an ergonomic chair is basically a chair that is created so that uh, the human body can comfortably sit in it for long periods of time. It's basically just more supportive. It, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm an interior designer and I cannot explain ergonomic right now. But anyways, it's basically just like a chair that's more comfortable for you to sit in for a long period of time. I'm sitting in it right now. This chair is from Target. I think it was about $150. If you know how much a really, really, really good ergonomic chair is, they could run up to like a thousand or thousands of dollars. Uh, you can get some that are a couple hundred that are even better than this. But I found that I really like this one. It's cute, it's supportive. I think it was a great price for how comfortable it is. I feel like I can sit in it for long periods of time. I'm also gonna put everything that I'm mentioning down in the description box if you're interested in buying it yourself, if they're still available. Um, some of them are affiliate links, but most of them are not. It just, just you know, everything's down there for, for you. My desk that I purchased is a ladder style desk that I got from Wayfair. I love this desk because I feel like it's the perfect size to fit into my really tiny New York City bedroom. The desk is big enough for me to have my laptop, my mouse, and I always have like a little snack next to me. So it's the perfect size, but it's not too big. It also has lots of shelving above that I've been using to display my books. It just makes me feel more motivated when I have this one spot that I go to to work. When I'm sitting at this desk, I'm in work mode. I'm not laying in my bed. I don't sit on my phone as much. I can't sit in front of the TV and have Netflix on when I work. I cannot emphasize this enough that it is 100% worth it to invest in your work from home setup because it is really where you're spending the majority of your day. So you wanna be comfortable, you want it to look cute, I am really happy that I did invest in these two pieces that I can use to work from home because again, we don't really know when we're gonna go back to the office and then even when we do, it's not gonna be full time. I'm still gonna be working here for a couple days a week. When you're working from home, it's a lot harder to have a work-life balance because you're kind of expected to be on call all the time 
or if you're like me, you feel guilty about taking a break or eating lunch. I feel like I constantly need to be productive or I need to be available or I need to be checking my emails. Thinking back, I cannot even fathom the fact that I would sit in an office for eight to 10 hours every single day and not be able to like do the dishes or like take a shower or like take a nap. But then I realized that the reason I was able to sit there for so long is because I actually took my full lunch break and I left. I just walked out of there. No one said anything to me. I would go with my coworkers out to lunch. I would go shopping. I would literally do whatever I wanted during my hour. I wouldn't bring my laptop with me. I wouldn't be checking my emails. I wouldn't be constantly on my phone. And I would come back to the office feeling rejuvenated. Like I had this break from work. I didn't need to think about it at all. And then I could come back and I could start focusing on what I needed to do again. Now, some days I take my break and it's not a full hour because I feel guilty that, oh, you know, I started work 10 minutes late and I went to the bathroom and I like made lunch. Uh, so all of that kind of adds up to an hour and I feel bad if I take an additional hour. Then when I do take my break, sometimes I'll just sit at my desk with my lunch and watch Netflix on my computer. It's not a real break. I'll go for a walk and I'll still be checking my emails on my phone. Like I need to stop doing that. But what I have started doing that's really helped me almost every single day, especially now that it's nice out, is taking a walk. For the full hour, I will get out of my physical apartment. I will go for a walk. I'll listen to a podcast or I'll listen to music or I'll go and run some errands and I won't look at my email or at least I'll, I'll try not to look at my email. It does leave me feeling more rejuvenated because I'm disconnecting completely from my job and being in nature outside in general, like on a nice day is very helpful. Even when I am not on my lunch break and I'm feeling super, super stressed about work Work or about a specific problem, I will get up, I will leave my laptop and I will go for a walk. And I find that that just in general calms me down. But if walking is not your thing because you are either a fish or you hate dogs, then find something else that you love to do every single day while you're on your break that is not work related. It could be cooking, it could be shopping, it could be making dumbass YouTube videos that literally no one except for your mother is gonna watch. And I know that it's not easy for everyone to just go and take an hour lunch break. Some people don't get lunch breaks. Some people People are so busy that you physically cannot take a lunch break. There are many, many days where I am slammed, especially recently I've been super busy that I feel like it's a waste of an hour if I go take my break because there's so many other things that I need to do. <laughs> I still find time throughout the day. If I've been working on a deadline and I don't have the time to take my full lunch break, I at least will go and take a 10 to 15 minute walk or you know, I'll walk to the store and I'll go get something or I'll go pick up my lunch somewhere that's a couple blocks further away just to, to get outside and have a little break. And more likely than not, your boss and your coworkers are not gonna care if you take a couple minutes to yourself. Nine times out of 10, if you tell them, hey, I just need to take a 15 minute mental health break, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'll be right back. They are gonna encourage you to do that. I promise you are not gonna get in trouble. So do not feel embarrassed or ashamed to ask for that. Babe, do I even need to give you a reason? Like, come on. Looking hot is like probably the most important piece of this effing puzzle. When you look hot, you feel hot, which is why my resting body temperature is 100 degrees. And I love to feel hot, especially when I'm working from home because it really gives me the confidence to tell off my coworkers in a team's meeting. Go fuck yourself, Kevin. Or take selfies when I'm waiting for Photoshop to open up. Or fear for your life when you're casually walking down the streets of New York City in the middle of the day and this older, strange, creepy man comes up to you and says, hey baby, and tries to grab you by the waist. But you turn around and you punch him in the fucking face because A, I'm not your baby, B, I'm not your baby, and C, don't fucking touch me. Speaking of looking hot, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this shoe company called Vivea. Vivea. V Vivea. Vivea? Vivea. <clears throat> Vivea. Vivea is a sustainable shoe company that makes shoes out of recycled 
water bottles. We love this because we love the earth. Someone from the company reached out to me and offered to send me a free pair of shoes and it was so hard honestly for me to pick a pair because there were so many styles that I was interested in and so many that I thought were really cute. I ended up getting the Jade Mules in Deep Ebony. I've been dying for a new pair of black heels that are versatile and I can wear with a bunch of different outfits. My number one concern is comfort because uh, obviously I live in New York City so I'm walking 99% of the time so I need something that's cute but also comfortable, something that's not gonna make my feet bleed all night. It's 9 a.m. I just got home from a long night of going out and drinking and I had a, an event and I went to work. I wore the shoes all night. This was the first time I was wearing them. I wanted to put them to the extreme test, not even break them in a little bit and just, just go out all night in them and, and see how they did. And from walking around the city all night and being on the subway and like being at a work event, I mean, they are so comfortable. I was able to wear them all night and my feet weren't hurting. I mean, I totally could wear them like all night if I needed to. I also love that these are durable enough to throw in the washing machine because again, and we know how disgusting the streets of New York City are. And I love that they came in all recyclable paper packaging. If you wanna grab a pair of Bavea shoes yourself, I have a discount code for you guys. I will link it down in the description box if you are interested. And thank you again to Bavea, 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 Bavea for sending me these. <laughs> This is going to be the unpopular opinion, but the number one thing that I've been doing lately that I feel has significantly improved my day-to-day -day life is waking up early. I wake up almost every day between five and six in the morning and I start being productive immediately. You're probably thinking, Kelsey, are you good girl? Who was your dealer and can I have his number because I want whatever good stuff you're on if you're high enough to tell me that you want me to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and be productive before I even start my 10 hour work day in the room the size of a small storage closet. Hear me out. Back in college, I used to wake up at six o'clock every single morning and go to the gym. Literally, who was I? That's college energy and motivation for you. Especially when you're binge drinking every single night. I mean, I had superpowers. I, I, honestly, I peaked at that time in my life. 22 was, was the peak. Not only was I in the best shape of my life because well, I was going to the gym, but I also felt so motivated and accomplished that I was waking up before the rest of the world to get something done because I'm extremely competitive. And I believe that if I'm waking up earlier than you are, then that makes me better than you because it's true, I am better than you. I had a sense of accomplishment early in the morning that made me prepared to tackle even my most boring class. And that was physics 101, by the way. So I've started doing that again. No, not working out, definitely not that. Just the waking up early part. <clears throat> because I, I can't work out, I actually have a doctor's note. Instead, I'm editing YouTube videos or the side project I'm working on. I'll lay in bed, I'll drink my coffee, sometimes I'll turn on the radio. And this is actually a point when instead of sitting at my desk, I will sit in my bed so I can feel productive as well as waking up and just feeling a little bit more cozy. I do actually feel my most productive in the morning because I'm well rested. You know, I've got my coffee, so I'm getting a little bit of boost of energy. And especially looking out the window and seeing it's a beautiful day outside sometimes just makes me feel good about the day, good about the morning, I don't know. I'm such like an early bird. <laughs> and then when eight or 9 a.m. rolls around and I have to start work, I already feel like I've accomplished something. Plus, when work is over, I don't have to feel like I need to be productive. I don't have to feel like I wasted the whole day or that I didn't get that thing that I needed to get done. I can allow myself to shut down and relax. I can do whatever I want. I can do something fun. I don't need to worry about being productive the rest of the day after I'm super drained from my nine to five. So I challenge you to start waking up earlier every single day and write me down in the comments how many times you snoozed your alarm because I bet it's like at least 11. Let's keep this next one short and sweet. Stop working after work hours. I am an activist in the cause for normalizing working during the work hours you were getting paid to do and not feeling guilty about working overtime or working after work or working on the weekends. I am not very good at this, but I'm trying very hard to be good at this. The fact is that working more than your allotted 40 hours a week is now seen as standard and necessary 
necessary if you want to achieve anything in your career or get ahead in anything in life. And that is just simply not true. 40 hours a week as it stands is way too fucking much to be working. How do people do this for their entire lives? I am all, I've only like two and a half years into my career and I'm fucking going crazy. I mean, maybe because I have the attention span of like a small goldfish. There's a lot of people that I either work with now or have worked with in the past that see working more than 40 hours a week as a very standard thing. And they kind of look down at you if you are sticking to your 40 hours or if you are signing off right at five or six o'clock whenever you get off. And like, you're a slacker if you don't work more. Like, no, babe, why, why are you doing that? I'm constantly feeling guilty about stepping away from my computer for five minutes or stepping away to eat lunch or not checking my emails every single weekend. I'm always freaking out like, oh my God, if I go to the bathroom and my boss calls me, he's gonna think I'm lazy and I'm slacking off and I'm not actually working from home. Everybody poops, even your boss, and he or she will understand. And while I'm ranting about this, I straight up most of the time will tell people, I'm sorry, I will not be working overtime this weekend. If you'd like to discuss this further on Monday, I'd be happy to. Let's put something on the calendar or something like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not working past six today. Like I have a thing that I'm not missing. Unless of course I have a deadline, which is like every day. And that is all the useless knowledge and entertainment I have for you today. I hope these coping techniques will help bring a little bit more sanity and happiness into your everyday life. And I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. If you like this video, please like it, share it with a hopeless working friend, and subscribe to Kelsey Omis for more dumb crap like this.